Happy birthday, dear Denise. Happy birthday to you. Oh, now, make a wish. Make a wish for yourself. For anything you want. In the past, she has said to me on occasion, I'm deaf, and I say, yes, you know, and, uh, well, I tell her I understand. I know how she feels, that, uh, I, you're sad, I understand you're sad, you're left out, I know. It makes you feel badly, but, uh, it's okay, you know, we, uh, it's okay to be deaf to me. And I also told her it will always be this, because she said, well, maybe I won't, oh, that was enough, and maybe I won't be deaf, and, such and such time, and I... You had explained that it would change no. the way it is, and it wasn't going to change. It sounds awfully stupid of me, but even in the beginning, I didn't even quite realize the fact that deafness meant being un unable to speak, un unable to communicate. It really didn't occur to me in the beginning, and I remember uh, Harriet just breaking down and crying and saying she won't be able to talk. I didn't realize what a devastatingly terrible thing it is to happen to a person. Their whole future, their whole education, their whole their whole relationship with other people was affected by this. It's, it's horrible. It's probably every bit as bad as being blind or worse in many ways. She was tearing the family apart. She was in contact. She was getting into, you, into you everything. You don't and it was know what she was like. She could. She would just, she was so miserable. Yeah. I want to dip my dish. In your dish? Sure. Where else would I put it? Oh. Her unhappiness and, and her tantrums and her screaming and her, her miserableness touched everybody. Her behavior, as far as, you know, we couldn't. No, it was but difficult he could to teach her. her right or wrong. And we were, were very permissive and very patient, and we couldn't change and be rigid and, and insist on something from her, especially when I knew she didn't understand anything, so it gave me this double guilt. How can I force her when she doesn't know what I want from her? She could go into a restaurant and destroy it. I mean, yeah. just go in and anywhere, in any public place, have the most horrendous scene. didn't scenes. know how to behave. Everybody would stare at her. And I... Blue? Yeah. Blue. What happened to your your balloon? Uncle, you don't know. Okay, so you know, yes, I'm sure. Try again. Yeah. Try up on the table. Well, try on the table. Maybe it will it will work better. Ah, yeah. uh, what happened? Well, yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. Well, it's probably experience similar to most, most parents. We took her to our pediatrician and he said she's uh, she's fine. She was um, eight months old. I'm sure she's fine. And if you're concerned in six months, well, just bring her back to me. You know, as if it was perfectly fine to just live with all that anxiety and uh, worry. And he treated me, I felt very, very shabbily, like a neurotic mother. Because I think regardless of what he said, that uh, I knew there was something, something seriously wrong. I remember going back to him and he said, my, was I surprised. What a surprise, profoundly deaf. He handled the whole thing very poorly. Pediatricians. The lack of knowledge that they have on, on deafness and deaf children is incredible. Why? It's absolutely incredible. Uh, pediatricians that you would otherwise have a great deal of confidence in, when you su suspect something of this sort, you su suspect deafness. And as parents, you, you pretty much are right, I would think, most of the time. And they will tell you something, well, go uh, won't clap your hands behind her when she's not looking, or uh, maybe she'll outgrow it, go home and wait a few weeks and see what happens. They just absolutely had no 
background and no knowledge whatsoever in this, in this area. When I went in for the testing situation, I did not know what a decibel was. <coughs> and even when the testing was done, he never really told us. He never explained it to us. And as much as I was able to question him, I still got no information. Yeah. And I really got the feeling that they didn't want to tell me that I was just a mother, just a parent. I did not need this information. It was not going to be forthcoming. And uh, just leave it all to the professional. And boy, we really needed some help then. I, you know, really was terribly frustrated. It was very difficult for her to get her point across, uh, for, for her to tell us what was bothering her, what she wanted. Uh, what we just, wanted to tell her. Right, we couldn't tell her what we wanted. Uh, she was irritable a good part of the time. But she didn't understand or, or, right. often. Uh, we couldn't make we her really understand the We the meant well, was. and our intentions yeah. were well. She never understood yeah. that uh, we were going to supply her needs, that we understood and we were going to supply them, but she didn't know anything, you know, she couldn't understand that. And we were going to help her out with whatever we understood, and she would just fly off the hand. Well, we had total communication, and she was very, very difficult. And I knew that uh, the educational level of deaf children was very, very poor, and that, uh, you know, we could not, even though we felt she was a bright child, and she came from a home where we could certainly give, give her our best, and we knew what, you know, we wanted to do for her. I knew that uh, the hope for a good, you know, attainment, a good uh, educational level was very poor, and uh, it was a tremendous worry in this especially in the day of, you know, women taking care of themselves and, uh, and her future, what would she do? We have we had high expectations for our children, and um, I worry terribly. When we were going to go somewhere uh, prior to this, uh, we couldn't really make it clear to where we were going. We, were going to, we would have pictures. We used to take pictures of people or places. Whenever we would go there, we'd take pictures and Polaroid shots. And if we were going to go back, I'd have to show her the picture try to tell her where we were going so she would understand. Uh, after this, we didn't have to do that. With telecommunication, we just simply told her she remembered and she knew what we were talking about. She picked it up very fast and she re retained the signs. Her, she re her retention is incredible, really. We didn't just jump into total communication. It was a it's kind of a difficult decision at that point. We really weren't sure that it was the best thing. That sign language was good. Uh, you know, we're still on the oral side of the argument uh, as such. And it was what I think helped me personally to understand it was the fact that it wasn't strictly sign language. You were supposed to speak as you signed. And it was a combination of all sorts of communication. The first thing she used was an abstract sign. It was not something concrete of a food or milk or an object. It was a sign of later. And I thought that was very, very surprising to have picked up an abstract idea as the very first sign she Once ever she used. she started signing, it was just, you know, nothing. Nothing was out of the reach, out of reach of discussing with her in one form or another. We could really almost make her understand anything. Even if you had to change your language. Right. And this yeah. abstractness was yeah. tremendous. She just picked up on it. It was surprising, no end. I really didn't expect it. But one of my biggest concerns was how she would get along with her friends, how she get along with other kids. She gets along quite well with the kids in the neighborhood. Whether or not this will change as they get older, whether it'll start picking on her, teasing her, giving her a tough time, I don't know. I assume it'll happen to some extent. Happened already. You know, you would no more take away someone's crushes who doesn't have legs and say, go walk. And yet she's got to go out and handle these situations, and she does. When I'm not around, she plays with hearing children, and whatever level of communication they have, she handles it. She's, she's very independent, and she's, uh, she has a very good self-image. I see her as a very strong child who feels secure about herself. She's very who has confident. A, feels she's, 
she was a good self in it. She feels healthy. She'll look. Uh, well, she's not afraid to meet people. She's not afraid to approach people. She's a little shy occasion, like all children do. And, uh, but she went and bought a candy bar herself uh, while we were on vacation this one time. I was very leery of it, and Harriet insisted that she do it herself. And she certainly did it. She went there and got exactly what she wanted. She wanted money, no and she problem. said, I'll go buy it. And I no said to her, well. will you be able to talk to the lady to tell yeah. her? And she said, I will do it. And she did. And so I said, okay. And I gave her the money, and she wanted a cracker jack, and she came, came back, back with, with cracker, cracker jack. jack. And that was just fine. Academically, she's achieving. She's, she's achieving at well a school. very high level. Sure. And so that leads me to believe she will, you know, be able to handle college. When I talk about college, I talk about a deaf college. I don't talk about a hearing situation. I think that's unrealistic, but I certainly think that she can get a good education at a good deaf college. embarrassed to say, you know, a good few years to uh, to really come to terms with it. And I'm, I don't know what the change was, if it was total communication or perhaps it was that. Perhaps the family was more normal and more stable. And, uh, and all of a sudden it was just, it was okay. And uh, you know, most of, I think, most the most painful part of it had really passed. And uh, we just kind of went about doing what had to be done and uh, being realistic about the situation and trying to fill, fulfill her needs and, uh, and help her and the family function as normally as possible. Yes, I'll try it. Pick it up. Life is normal. All we do is just Completely. use a different form of communication, right. a different language. That's all it is. Otherwise, it's we use a different family. language as if some people spoke Russian in their home and and uh, we're bilingual, right. and that's what we are. You know, we just that's a good way to we're describe. We're bilingual it. family, and life is normal. So. Perfect way to describe it. And that's exactly yeah. what the situation is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one question she asked me from a different point of view: she was, uh, does God sign? And I thought to her. But my God, that really expresses how she feels about sign language, what it means to her. Yeah. And, um, I hope that says it all. That little girl looks like you. Ah! Yes! Well, why not? Okay, we'll wait. Like that? Mm -hmm. no. I just made it. Oh, my God. Bad. Cute little baby. Oh, no, no, but she's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Baby, baby. Oh, that's the little one. Yeah. I, 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 I,
and I start thinking about it. I sit in the car driving home from work or something. I start thinking about the niece. And I start crying, and uh, I couldn't help myself. Did I think about Eileen, how Eileen was doing? She's doing so well. She excelled. Everything she did was perfect. And I start thinking about the niece. I think, my God, uh, what's going to happen to her? How, how is she going to do? And I feel very bad. I just don't have those feelings anymore. I know there's going to be difficult times. There's going to be terribly tough times. We know this is going to happen. But I don't we, feel there's anything hard that we can't Nothing that we can't handle, handle at this point. I just don't feel that way anymore. When Denise was young and uh, before we started the uh, total program, and one of the reasons I think uh, we really started it was because what was important to me was to really have uh, good communication with my child. I had always had it with my first child, and who was a very verbal child and a very um, kind of reasonable child. And we always would chat and talk and had a nice rapport from a very early age. And uh, that was what was important to me as a, you know, as a mother. And uh, I think not having that with Denise was, was the most painful experience for me. It wasn't just not hearing voices, but that we did not have um, any kind of good communication, and that I could not see it as happiness. And I think that's really when uh, the decision to go into a uh, total situation was made. Uh, oh, Batman, that was my, my favorite program. What happened? Oh, I'm not gonna do. Phones on and listen. And if you hear the sound, raise your hand for me, okay? My okay. Let's go. Let's go. Do you want to slide now? We'll go down the elevator. Okay. Yes, good girl. Right. Maybe. In that ear? Okay. You're right. Nothing. Mm -mm. Yeah. Good. That's good. Good, Denise. Good. Okay. You may start thinking about it and you start recalling other things and you begin realizing just how serious it's going to be in the future. I start thinking about her uh, as she got older, as she dated, went out with, with boys, and uh, hopefully uh, that they would be nice nice fellows who wouldn't try to take advantage of her because of her deafness. And I thought about even with her uh, with, with girlfriend. Would they be uh, nice to her? Would they kind of bring her into things, or would they uh, make plans behind her back and this sort of thing? Uh, all these things start to bother me. All the concerns for a special child. Sure. That's it. 
I think I'm less worried about these things now, now that I know what kind of a kid Denise is. And uh, she seems to be doing very, very well. And I'm probably a little bit less worried about all these things than I was at that time. But there's still concerns, they're still there. One thing that really bothers me, really bothers me, I love music. And it's a very important part of my life. I use it to relax. I, I have the radio going at work when I'm working. I listen to FM. It's just very important. And I think that this kid will never really hear the music that I love so much. To be able to think of it whenever she wants to hum, whistle, sing. She just won't be able to do this ever. And that is, that's one thing that still bothers me about the whole thing. Well, I think uh, for the family, total communication has really brought us together in as a family unit. Uh, as far as Denise is concerned. Very much. Family, so. all signs. Um, Denise's older sister, Eileen, is uh, proficient in signing. Um, they have a good sibling relationship. It's, I would say, as normal as any other. They have communication. They um, you know, relate to each other, and they can have good conversation. Um, and as a family, I relate to her very well. I think we have... Uh, you know, we approach a normal mother-child relationship, which is of great importance to me. And Denise is a happy child, which she was oh, yeah. not before. She's uh, well-functioning. She's um, very secure. I think she's got a good self-image, and she's got good language, and, uh, and is very much a part of the family. She asks for things. She demands to know. She. Um, wants to keep up with us, and I don't think she feels left out. She's not a left out child. She's not, she doesn't sit outside of our family, you know, as a deaf child in a hearing world. She uh, sits very much within a family that, uh, that understands her, and uh, I think she's a good example of that. I, I feel much better about it than I did then, because I see how well she's coming along, and it, it, she's really given me a lot of uh, yeah, good, good feelings lately in the last couple of years. I feel much stronger about the whole thing. There's a certain amount of peace that comes with acceptance, with reality. When you say, yes, this is it. And okay, I will do the best that I can within the situation that we have. And forget all the other things and work with what you have and do the very best you can with for Denise's and you know, edu good education and an emotional climate in a home that is conducive you know, to her individual growth and acceptance of herself and uh, a happiness. And um, that is all I'm concerned about. I never think anymore of any cure or anymore. anything electrical or mm -hmm. medical situation. We take nothing for granted with Denise, and uh, every achievement, every accomplishment we knew had uh, had been hard work, and uh, it was satisfying. It would bring us a great deal of joy, a great deal of pleasure, and I think uh, I think she's given us more joy than I ever imagined. Yeah. You know? And perhaps if uh, at the beginning, when it was, you know, the picture was so bleak. I could have known that uh, there was been such a positive return from her. I could have, uh, you know, I could have saved a lot of painful ideas. It would have been uh, much easier to accept. Absolutely. 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 We didn't but know this. We only saw disaster ahead at that time. It was like no future, or no good future. And now we know it. It just isn't true. It just isn't true. This kid is going to turn out to be a... a, a perfectly normal, happy adult who just simply does not hear. She's going to do well. We know it.